I wanted to meditate this morning, so I went to my favorite meditation spot in my living room. I sat down, I put my headphones on, but after about 10 minutes, I decided to get up and quit meditating because my mind was so busy and so all over the place. I was trying to bring my attention back to the voice in my meditation, but I kept failing. And then I thought, I'm not gonna pay attention to the speech, I would just focus on the music or my breathing. I even did my special little exercise that normally solves the problem, but nothing worked today. In the past, I would have felt frustrated about this, but now I just know that sometimes it's just best to leave the meditation, continue with my day and get back to it later. Luckily, it doesn't happen to me that often, let's say one out of a hundred times, and even when it does happen, that special little exercise I created can help me in calming my thoughts and in surrendering to the meditation. But today my mind was not having it, so I decided to sit down and make a video about it instead, about this annoying little phenomenon. I know this happens to some of you too, probably that's why you clicked on this video. I had people asking me under my videos in the comment section and also during on these one-on-one -on -one consultations why this is and what to do about it. Why does the mind wonder? So let's solve this mystery in this video. I want to tell you why your mind wanders during meditation. Is it good? Is it bad? And what my secret technique is to stop it. Which, as I just told you, can also fail at times, but it's free, so you might as well try it, because it may work for you. So when we are awake, there's a constant conversation in our brains trying to figure out what's going on inside us and whether that makes sense relative to what's going on outside or around us. We spend a lot of time contemplating the past, the future, the present, even things that might never happen at all. We are engaged in this all the time without having to try. That's just what our brains do. What we want to achieve with meditation is more awareness of this conversation and maybe even the ability to control it or steer it towards the way we want to feel and what we want our brain and all its amazing structures to be focused on. Sometimes we just want to completely quiet our mind, which I think is impossible. Because even when you think you're not thinking, as in you have no particular thought, you are actually thinking that you are not thinking, so you do have a thought. It's a trap, people. When we close our eyes, we're shutting down a major avenue of this external perception of everything that's outside or beyond the boundaries of our bodies, our skin, and our focus goes more inside. So when we shut down our major avenue for sensory output, which is vision, we shift our perception more towards what's happening at the level of our skin and inside our bodies. Many people can feel their heart beating, for example, or what's happening in their stomach, or even just how hot or cold our skin feels. Some people actually find it challenging to shift their focus to this internal perception. I think meditation is especially beneficial to those people. Why? Because it's challenging, and you probably agree that challenging things, things out of our comfort zone, things that are not easy to do at first, are the ones that promote growth. Once something is not challenging, it won't do much. Just think of physical exercise, for example. How do you build muscle? Resistance training, weightlifting. That's what increases muscle strength, by making your muscle work against a weight or force. Lifting weights and consistently challenging muscle tissue can cause it to get bigger. Same thing with our wandering mind. It's not gonna get bigger, but the more it wanders and is occupied by thoughts irrelevant to your meditation practice or goal, and the more you intentionally bring your focus back to the music or your breathing or the voice in the guided meditation, the more it promotes neuroplasticity. Neuroplasticity is the brain's ability to change and reorganize itself by forming new neural connections in response to learning, experience and changes in the environment. Neuroplasticity plays a key role 
in helping the brain adapt and learn new things. So is it good that your mind wanders during meditation? Well, it's neither good nor bad. It's kind of normal and certainly annoying at times, but you can actually turn it to your advantage if you dedicate yourself to bringing your attention back every time it wanders. And if it shifts again, you bring it back again. Think of muscle building. When something is easy, there's no learning, no muscle building, no growth there. We need challenge or even discomfort to turn on all the mechanisms, even at the cellular level, that can potentially change our neural circuits. And that means growth, improvement. Okay, how do we bring our attention back to the meditation? Simply by having the intention to do so. Your mind's going to wonder, but you are there to notice it, to remind yourself and pull it back. Sometimes we catch it early and sometimes we realize that the dude in the meditation has been talking for at least 10 minutes and we can't recall a single thing he said. And when this happens a lot within the same meditation, we get frustrated, right? So what is the solution? First, do not get frustrated. Accept and acknowledge that it's normal for the mind to wonder. There's nothing wrong with you. Second, take advantage of it and use the meditation as a perfect time to challenge your brain and promote neuroplasticity. Make peace with the fact that this meditation will probably not serve anything else right now, but there is always tomorrow. However, if you still get frustrated or disappointed, just get up. Honestly, the worst you can do is sit there for another 10 minutes feeling frustrated and hating yourself for it. So just get up, quit, move on with your day and get back to it later. There's always tomorrow. I have some tricks to share with you though. There are some things that I found that if I do prior to meditation, it will help me surrender more easily. It will help me be more present and engaged in the meditation itself. First of all, I think it's important to set the mood in your environment. I find that I have a favorite spot in my living room for meditating. Something about my living room and that particular place, sitting on a carpet, facing the window to the forest, that calms me more than if I was doing it in my bedroom. The lights, the vibration of the place, I don't know what it is, but something feels different there. I suggest you also find your favorite spot and position. I know that sitting keeps you more alert than lying down, but I don't recommend a lying down position because it can make you fall asleep. Your seated position has to be comfortable, but not too comfortable, so that it keeps you awake. I like to sit like this. I can do 15 minutes like this, but if I do a longer meditation, I like to support my back, so then I sit closer to the couch. Also, after 20 minutes, I feel that my legs can go numb, and then I just like to stretch them out and sit like this. I always recommend headphones for guided meditations, but before I put my headphones on, I do a short exercise if I think my mind is too busy. I created a set of massaging movements that I find help me calm my mind, but it also generates a nice blood flow which helps me keep my mind active for a vivid visualization. There's no science behind this, or at least I didn't read or look up anything regarding this, but I just found that it works for me. So I start by rubbing my shoulders, rolling my trapezius forward. Then I move up on my neck. And finally, I start tapping on my head with my fingertips. I'm not too gentle, but not too hard either. And I end the tapping by focusing on my crown area. Guys, I was just editing the video and I realized that I forgot to mention something. When I'm saying set the mood for the meditation, what I mean is make sure that the environment helps you get into the mood for meditating, like it helps you or it contributes to relaxing your mind. So it's not just about the location, but like, you know, use candles 
or have the perfect lighting or switch off the light completely. Make sure no one is going to disturb you. Switch your phone off. Uh, even put your phone away so there's no temptation that you need to look at your screen. Uh, it happened to me a couple of times. And what I also like to use is different scents, like meditation oil blends, like any kind of fragrance or essential oils that promote relaxation, you know. it's It can be a different scent for different people, but just find your own little blend. Make sure you go to the toilet before the meditation, so it's not like after two minutes in, you need to pee. Also make sure that you drink uh, water before the meditation so you're not gonna feel like oh I'm thirsty or I'm my lips are dry. I just make sure that I feel in total control and in the next 15 or 20 minutes I'm not gonna need anything. I remember when I went to the Sea of a Method mind control course at 13 which was like 100 years ago so I don't remember everything clearly. They did an exercise with us to help us study and focus better and I think we even used it before some visualizing meditations. So it was about imagining that you have an orange in your hand and you can pretend that you smell it and you also pretend to play with it, you know, for a bit. Uh, so we would feel its weight and then we place it on top of our head where I actually have my bun right now. Not a real orange, just an imagined one. But you could use a real one. Anything that you can balance on the top of your head, something that has a little weight but not heavy. And I find that when I have a slight but not painful sensation on the top of my head, it helps me stay more focused. With the head tapping exercise, I also aim at ending in the crown area and I sometimes even dig my nails into my scalp like this, so that after I remove my hand, there's a slight sensation that remains. Again, I don't know the science behind this, so please don't quote me on it, but it has always worked for me. Try it. Another thing I learned at the Silva course is that if you close your eyes and imagine that you are looking slightly above eye level, it encourages your brain to drop into an alpha state, which is a more relaxed brain state. Not too relaxed, like theta, but relaxed enough, yet still aware, perfect for visualizing. I hope you got something out of this video. I hope next time your mind wanders during meditation, you will just remember what I said, and it will make you smile instead of getting frustrated. Like, share, comment, subscribe, because it's free to do, and it helps me grow my channel. Hope to see you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.